Hello and welcome again. It's Margaret Seconet. Welcome back again to my YouTube channel. So as we were talking uh, before, we want a bed that has the stability and the support from having a solid headboard and having a solid wall behind us in or when you're sleeping. So it, like, like in this uh, particular photo, you have the stability with a solid headboard and a solid wall behind this uh, particular bed. Now, what about the this next uh, photo here? So this one has is a little bit uh, iffy because of the fact that uh, it does have the support of the headboard and uh, and 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 uh, stability as well, but it doesn't really create that uh, you know uh, stableness that a solid wall will have because of the fact that uh, it has two. It's it's backing on to to a wall that has two doors. So if one door is bad, I guess two doors is even worse, right? So this is a no-no. Okay. Now there's uh, another type of uh, arrangement that I would like to share with you, and this is a bed that is angled. So in this kind of uh, situation, you don't have the uh, you know the stability of the solid wall. Okay, um, I'm not really sure if there is a headboard here. So if even if there's such a if the if the headboard is a solid headboard, you still don't have that uh, you know support by having that uh, solid wall behind you. Okay, so no support. So it's uh, it's also uh, a kind of uh, arrangement that I would not actually recommend. Likewise with with the next one, it is also um, you know placed at an angle. Um, with this type of headboard, it's it's not even solid, so it's more look looks more like a bookshelf, right? So it doesn't have the stability. Neither does it have the support. Okay, now let's get to, to talking about the T circulation. Let's look at this next photo here. So what we have here is a <clears throat> bed that have an overhead fixture hanging above where your pillow is supposed to be your head pillow is supposed to be so like in this case as you can see from the yellow arrows there's all this suppressing energy coming down on you when you sleep in these two types of uh, you know uh, arrangement bed bed arrangement okay so it is you know it is best to avoid this kind of uh, bed arrangement and uh, because of the fact that the pressing chi is coming down, pressing down you, uh, the likelihood of you getting a good night's sleep is is not possible here. You know, okay, you will probably have a hard time, you know, uh, with your sleep, and probably have some side effects on 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 your physical body as well. Okay, now there's another photo here slide that I would like to share with you too, and it's the same thing. <clears throat> it does have that, uh, you know, shelf above the pillows, wherein you know it actually suppresses the energy and comes down on you while you sleep. Okay, so again, it's it's not really ideal. Now, what other types of chi should we be aware of? This one is that of a cutting chi, which is coming from uh, the door. So you know, with the energy coming from the door and hitting you while you're sleeping it is not really ideal okay so this is what we call the cutting chi and uh, when you have a, a bed for, uh, placement or formation or arrangement then you're actually subjecting yourself to the cutting chi from coming from the uh, from the bedroom door okay now if you if that door is either a, a closet door a walking closet door or your on suite bathroom door it does also have the same type of effect of a cutting chi okay so there's uh, another photo it's it, it's almost similar okay and uh, again so today the 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 topic that we're going to be stressing on is just on the chi circulation right now okay there are other features here that of course uh to a feng shui practitioner you know would actually be a no-no but you know today we're just concentrate on the cutting chi so right now we have the cutting chi 
uh, from the door and as well as an angle from this uh, corner of this wall here okay so it will hit any any sleeper in this uh, bed and you know it, it won't you know the, the energy will actually not be ideal for you to have a good night's sleep okay so let's uh, go to this next slide we talk about uh, circulation chi circulation and again <clears throat> this type of bed uh, placement not only is the, this one on the left not only does this not also have the support the uh, and the, the stability no headboard and no you know uh, well no headboard and the circulation here is not available okay likewise in this uh, other photo here there's no chi circulation around the bed okay and uh, <clears throat> it does have a solid headboard but the chi circulation is not proper or it doesn't you know it's not fully circulating okay so what else uh, what else uh, do we no, here like what other types of bed okay so this is uh, some sort of a, like a tatami bed and again we asked the question is there uh, any support is there a uh, chi circulation and again you know proper chi circulation around the bed should be there but it doesn't have and these are beds that are also lacking in the support in terms of the headboards okay now in terms of okay the spacing underneath the bed okay what what do we need here okay so like uh in this photo it's a some sort of a tatami bed you also ask the question is there good chi circulation is there a, a, a you know a, is there a support Okay. is there a stability okay so the thing is like when you're looking at this type of bed the most ideal type of uh, situation would be finding a bed <clears throat> that is at least um, eight to a feet of uh, you know a distance like from here the distance would be around eight to a feet uh, so the best uh, type of uh, mattress would be the ones that has double uh, mattress double layered mattress okay so you know at least when you wake up you can sit properly and uh, you know uh, on your bed before really standing up you know and uh, there would be some sort of like if you have a bed frame there would be some sort of circulation of the chi energy around your bed okay so the, the, like with this type of uh, in this photo with in this slide with this type of bed you don't really have that chi circulation and uh you know so it's 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 the and on top of that from this photo not only does it is it missing the headboard it's also not really on a solid wall it is on a wall where in a door is uh is uh you know is uh found and uh, the chi energy coming from the door is also not ideal. Okay. Now we I did mention some uh, on a, at uh, the previous video that I'll be touching on bunk beds. Okay. So chi circulation and bunk beds. Now what do we need to <clears throat> remember when we we're looking at the bunk bed? Most of the time our bunk beds are actually um, placed near a wall. You know, like it's 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 diagonally onto the wall okay and on top of that you, you have to make sure if the the ceiling from this top bed is at least seven feet between the bed and the ceiling at least then i don't know i mean most of most of the time the bunk beds won't have that type of height you know uh, from this second to the first 
a bed okay and then if you have a bedroom that has a low ceiling then chances are you don't have that uh, amount of gap that is needed for chi circulation to circulate properly okay so like in this photo you know the gap between the ceiling up here is not really that much you know again you know at least you have at least we need to consider if there's at least a seven feet uh, gap between the bed and the ceiling so it would actually be applicable here and it also should be applicable here okay so if you have a bedroom that has low ceiling then of course chi circulation is not going to be there there won't be a uh, proper air circulation okay and uh okay now there is uh, another type of uh, situation where you turn the bunk bed into <clears throat> well the lower part of the bunk bed is actually turned into a study or an office so again there is uh, pressure or oppressed chi coming from not only if this ceiling is not that high then you know again you you need at least seven feet gap so if the if the ceiling is not that high then you have that pressure coming down on you when you're sleeping or when you're studying also like if this is air you know you don't want to be sitting underneath something like this okay for long hours period of time i don't think you'll be able to function pretty well okay so turning your this you know lower portion of your bunk bed into something like this where you have to sit long for for a long long period of hours is is really really not ideal i mean you might want to turn it into some sort of a playroom where you move around and that type of thing but where you don't actually uh you know sit for long hours and do serious work or study okay so what are some of the beds that are, are pretty okay just looking in terms of t circulation so we have um, this type of bed, okay, can have this type of bed as well, and uh, this type of bed as well, okay. So, <clears throat> you know, when you're looking for, uh, you know, for a bed, make sure you have stability and, and, and uh, with a solid headboard, and when you're trying to place your bed, uh, make sure that it has a good support. The other thing that, that you have to also remember now is like it has to have good chi circulation and the proper distance from the floor. At least, uh, you know, you should have at least eight inches to a feet uh, of uh, distance from the floor. So at least you, when you wake up, you can actually sit properly on the bed. Okay. So, you know, um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, short session on the chi circulation of the beds and the bedrooms. And I, you know, I'd like to invite you again to join me in my other videos and to subscribe to my channel for instant notification. So it's Margaret here saying bye bye for now.